Hello, my name is Tom, and I produce music like the song you're hearing now. In this episode of Understanding Synthesizers, I'm going to talk about envelopes. These videos are written to be viewed in order, so please watch the first three episodes if you haven't done so. So far in this series, I've covered the generation of sound and how we shape it. But what stops a synth from playing constantly? The answer, as may seem obvious from the title of the video, is envelopes. They work as a gate between sound generation and user. Essentially, they build an action plan for when a key is pressed or released by the user. They feature four stages, each independently controlled. The first is attack which determines how long it takes to reach the maximum value. Second is the decay time. This determines how long it takes to go from the maximum value to the next stage, which is sustain. As long as the key is held down, the sustain value will remain held. And then finally, we move to the release stage, which is what happens when the key is released. This determines how long it will take the sound to reach the zero point from the sustain level. These four stages are why we refer to envelopes as ADSR envelopes. Envelopes will usually always control the amplitude or volume of the synth, but they are an extremely useful tool and are often applied to other things such as filters and pitch. Take a listen to this sound with an envelope applied to the filter. You can hear having the filter open initially and then close brings a sort of impact to the attack of the sound. When building envelopes, it might be useful to think about the envelopes of real sounds. For example, a plucked string has a very fast attack, whereas a bowed string has a very slow attack. So if we apply this to synths, a pad might sound better with a long attack that slowly builds into the chord, like a violin might when it's bowed. And if we're creating a lead melodic passage, then having a quick attack with a short decay might be more appropriate. ADSR controls are all in seconds, except from sustain, which is a level in decibels or occasionally in a percent. Other envelope controls include key tracking and velocity tracking, so that higher and louder notes become quieter. This might seem a little counterintuitive for the velocity. This might seem a little counterintuitive for the velocity one, as we often want high velocity notes to be louder, but it's a good way of averaging out a piece of MIDI that has extreme jumps of velocity. You might also see the ability to hold a note between its attack value and a decay value. And the other common option is to change the envelope mode. Traditionally, an envelope is in gate, which turns the key press into a gate as mentioned. We also have one shot, where as soon as a key is pressed, an envelope will play to its end and hold, where it plays until the end of the sustain and only moves to release when the next key is pressed. Massive's loop feature allows you to create a sustain for your envelope that changes. You can create a unique shape by blending two shapes together and controlling the amount of times it will play. Think of it like an extra LFO. I can't say I've seen this feature in any other synths, but Absynth also has some similar morphing features which are useful. I wouldn't say it's essential to have these controls, but certainly they're very useful and very convenient. Take a listen to some of your favourite synth sounds and other sounds. Think about how they change over time from when they begin playing. This will allow you to think better about your own envelopes and how to apply them to certain stages of the sound design process. I think that covers everything for envelopes. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.